Hello everyone, I'm Christina Roberts, graduate student at Liberty University Online, and today I will be addressing the topic of the importance the Quakers had on American society. The Quakers, also known as the Society of Friends, was founded by a man by the name of George Fox, who was born in England in 1624. At the age of 18, Fox had left home on a search of enlightenment, and by 1646, he had declared his reliance on the inner light of the living Christ. Fox rejected many of the traditional church practices, such as the sacraments, paid clergy, and even church attendance. He also emphasized the priesthood of all believers, which can be found in 1 Peter 2, 5. And this was also emphasized during the Reformation under Martin Luther. The idea of an individual experience and relationship with God was really quite radical for this time. Even though the Anglican Church had broken off from the Roman Catholic Church, it had retained the hierarchy structure that was established by Roman Catholicism. This structure even followed into some establishments within the American colonies, most notably in the Massachusetts Bay Colony under the Puritan structure. It was here that the first Quakers arrived in 1656. Mary Fisher and Aunt Austin arrived. However, they were turned away by the magistrates there. Quakers would establish themselves there, but they would find themselves under severe persecution. Four years after the first Quakers arrived, Mary Dyer was hung for her beliefs. There is a statue dedicated to her with the inscription, Witness for Religious Freedom. Ultimately, the Quakers would find refuge in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania was founded by William Penn, who had become a Quaker in 1667, and he had established a fairly tolerant religious policy. And this would be a model of how religion could operate within a free society, apart from government interference. This would really set the standard for freedom of religion that was provided in the Constitution after the American Revolution. And while the Quakers didn't take part in the, um, the fight for freedom in the Revolution, this was not indicative of their loyalty to the crown. And as a matter of fact, they were actually anti-authority in the sense that they did not believe in giving allegiance to one person over the other. And this is why they refused to move their hats to those in authority. The main reason why they did not take part in the fighting in the American Revolution was because they were pacifists. Another area where Quakers really set a standard was in equality at a time, again, that it was not popular to do so. While most Christians, Christian dom denominations had split on the issue of slavery, this was an area that the Quakers were always united. Some of the leading abolitionists were Quakers, such as John Woolman and Lucretia Mott, and they were involved in the Underground Railroad. And Lucretia Mott was also very much involved in the women's suffrage movement, which again, this belief of equality between men and women could be found in early Quaker beliefs. This really stems from that relying on the inner light of the living Christ and the priesthood of the believer. The idea that one could hear directly from God and they didn't have to go through the priest or a minister or a governing authority really set the precedent for the liberty of conscience that we see within uh, the founding of America and the founding documents. When you examine many of these principles of equality and freedom of religion, you really can tie them back to early Quaker beliefs. And this demonstrates the importance that the Quakers had on the founding of our nation, on the freeing of many slaves, and the equality of all humanity.